You know, as a kid watching Nelson so Raven, and even now, this was always one of my most memorable episodes. The truth is, I don't hire black people. If it wasn't for Tony, Tony, oh. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. This video is going to be about the hit TV show, That's So Raven, and popular memorable episode. I'm sure most of us that grew up watching the show remember called True Colors. Before I get into the episode, I gotta give Raven her props and Disney their props for giving Raven the show because, you know, those of us that are old enough to remember, before Miley Cyrus took over with Hannah Montana, Raven was the queen of Disney Channel. I mean, she had Dazzle Raven, one of the most popular shows at the time, the Cheetah Girls, I mean, do I even have to explain the Cheetah Girls? And she was on Kim Possible, like, Raven was that one. Yep, that's me. Before I get into the main story with this episode, there's a B-plot with Raven's father trying to get her little brother, Corey, to learn about black history. This was obviously a Black History Month episode. Probably came out around February 2004. So, you know, Disney was inclusive with that, especially with That's a Raven, their most popular you know, black sitcom. They incorporated these type of episodes. Same thing with The Proud Family. Look, when I was a kid, African-American history wasn't even taught in our textbooks. So the episode begins with Raven, you know, coming downstairs for breakfast, telling her family that, oh, she's going to go apply to this new store at the mall with Chelsea, her white best friend. I'm only mentioning this because it's important to the storyline. Chelsea and I are going to the mall to apply for jobs at Sassy's. And just for a little bit more background, Raven is an aspiring fashion designer. You can tell by her clothes, her attitude, she has that spark, right? She has the experience. She even sews her own clothes. She makes her own creations. So Raven has a passion for fashion. This would be the perfect job for her to work in a clothing store. Chelsea just tags along, you know, just to have a job. They could work together, right? But the thing is, even when they're filling out the job application, you can tell Chelsea has no experience with this and she's not making it easy for them to even hire her. Why do you want this job? I don't know. <laughs> Special skills? None. And the manager has them go through different tests to test their abilities with customer service, with folding, you know, the retail basics. Raven obviously has a better knack for this. Well, I stacked mine according to color, size, and fabric. I stacked mine according to quality. I put the cutest one on top and all the ugly ones on the bottom. And even in her facial expressions, you can tell that the manager really doesn't like what Chelsea is doing. And she knows Raven is the better candidate. But we soon found out that Chelsea ends up getting a job. And when she asked about Raven, for some reason, even though Raven was the better candidate, Raven wasn't hired. You guys, I got the job! Ah! That's what I'm talking about! Are you saying that I didn't get the job? Yeah, I'm sorry, Ray. If you're gonna tell by now, this is an episode based on job discrimination, you know, basically racism, but within the workplace, using somebody's race against them to not hire them, even though they're one of the top candidates you might have saw that whole week or the whole year. There's gotta be some reason why you didn't get that job. We then get better clarification of this when Raven has a vision. The truth is, I don't hire black people. By this time, it's Raven, Chelsea, and their other best friend, Eddie, who's black as well, and they come to our house, she tells them about the vision, and they end up having a conversation, and Eddie even says this. Have you ever seen anybody black, Latino, or Asian working at Sassy's? The manager, for whatever reason, didn't think black people or other ethnicities that were not white were a good look for the store, a great representation for the store. Even though they could have been the best candidates, the best folders, the best with the customers, they knew how to pick out outfits, whatever the case was, for that job description, they could have been the best ones. Like Raven, her race was the ultimate factor in her not getting the job. I can't believe I didn't get the job because I'm black. This goes into a saying that I've always heard that's proven to be true in some cases, where it's like black people always have to work 10 times as hard as others. And sometimes that's not even enough. And I know with this episode, 
especially relating to like the way these new shows are trying to make it seem like black people good, white people bad. That's not the case. But something like job discrimination, what Raven face going against Chelsea, who was obviously less capable of doing the job, that happened. That happened 20 years ago when the episode came out, and it still happens today. Oh my God. Now, I know y'all have seen these news stories. Now, the excuse is not, oh, not because they're black. It's, oh, braids or dreadlocks. Those are not in dress code or suitable for the workplace. So you ever see these stories about someone suing for like hair discrimination? Or you got things like the Crown Act, where you can now be discriminated against for having certain hairstyles, certain braids, certain dreadlocks, certain you know, black hairstyles. Could somebody please make it make sense? You got a twist hairstyle. Sorry, great application, great qualifications. Oh, you got two master's degrees, but we're gonna pass. Thank you so much. Really? That is so stupid. Before I continue with the episode, I appreciate how blunt they were with the lady saying, we don't hire black people. Because you know, this being Disney Channel, this being you know a kid show for a younger demographic, a lot of the shows, they wanted to have certain messages, they would kind of beat around the bush, and you had to, you know, sugarcoat it, but they clearly had the lady come out and say, we don't hire black people. And I gotta say, as a little black boy watching this, around 20, 19 years ago, I was about eight or nine when this episode came out, that really, like, struck something within me. And like I said, even all these years later, that was always one of the most memorable episodes. And not to say I had nightmares and I was like, <gasps> every time I went to apply for a job, but that's always one of the tabs that stayed open in my mind. You know, you have a whole bunch of tabs on your computer. You have a whole bunch of tabs in your memory, right? That was always one of the ones that stayed with me. Every time I went to apply for a job, depending on who did the interview and, you don't want to think like that, but you have to. That's just the way the world is. That's just the way society is. Some people don't matter. They don't see you as, oh, this black guy applying for a job, this Asian lady applying for a job. They just see, oh, your resume. They like to meet you in person, see the energy you give off. And from then on, if the job is for you, they want to call you, right? But some people, like this lady in the episode, the first thing you see is the color of your skin. But for some people, like the manager of that store, first thing they see or they think in their mind is, oh, another black one. But they're entertaining. You know, Raven and Chelsea going for the jobs. She was happy and jippy and energetic and she was entertaining it. And But deep down inside, she was like, I don't care how good this girl is. She's not working here. She'd rather have the incompetent white friend work there versus this black girl, who's obviously better at the job. Um, that doesn't make no sense. Now, continuing with the episode, Raven tells her parents about it, and you know, that makes a whole big thing, and they all get together, come up with this idea. They get this lady from a TV show to go help them secretly record this lady admitting it to Chelsea through a camera in her hat. If this woman is gonna admit that she's a racist, you've gotta be there to hear her say it. The mini camera is in your hat. This type of discrimination needs to be exposed. I got you on camera. You on candid camera now. Y'all know it wouldn't be a classic That's a Raven episode if Raven didn't dress up and get into some type of disguise. So Raven comes in the store dressed as an older black man. I want you to keep a really close eye on that guy over there. And immediately, the manager tells Chelsea, go watch her, go watch him, go watch him. Chelsea's like, why? And then she says, Certain kinds of people need a little more attention. So this plays into another idea that some managers, or you know, some people have this idea that not only are black people not worthy for a job, no matter how qualified they are, but there's this instance where they think that, oh, they're gonna steal. Oh, anytime a black person walks into the store, keep an extra eye on them because there's a higher chance they're going to steal something. 
And y'all know I got a story time for this too, right? I got so many different story times. I've told this before, but I'm going to tell it again. For those of y'all that don't know, I used to work at the Gap when I was in college, right? And this Gap store was in a very fancy neighborhood. Two blocks away were stores like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Fendi. Yeah, this Gap was in that type of neighborhood. So we had all type of people, all type of demographics, different people coming to the store. One instance in particular, this was in a two day span. I remember I was on the first floor. We had two floors. I was on the first floor ringing on the register. Then afterwards, I went to the sales floor to, you know, tend to the tables, garment care, things like that. All of a sudden, I remember these two black guys came in. They had do rags and white beaters on. Mind you, they had like three shopping bags. Right? And they went walking upstairs to the men's department. I immediately remember at this time we had to wear walkies. So we had the walkies on our hip and we had like little earpieces. I remember my manager saying, Tony, Tony, those guys that just went upstairs, go up there and ask them if they need help. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I seen the guys walk in with the shopping bags to go upstairs. But like I said, they were dark skinned black guys, do rags, and white beaters. So I'm like, hmm interesting and the manager that asked me this was a latino man to be exact i'm like oh i go up there ask them they need help they're like oh la, la, la. they need help finding some jeans they bought their jeans and left paid for them and left no problem about two days later i cannot make this up i swear i cannot make this up two days later it was this middle-aged white man came into the store i remember he had on a track suit he was like six two he was like really tall. And he came in, for some reason, when you came to our store, we had like these $90 jeans in the front table, folded perfectly. You know, they always make sure, fold those jeans in the front. Like they wanted that table to be like, <gasps> these $90 jeans, right? So he comes in, and mind you, this is, these are women jeans. Men's section is upstairs. He comes in, he's looking at the jeans, he's standing there for a while. And I'm like, I'm on the floor, we have other people on the floor, but you know, nobody was really paying him no attention. This manager that told me to watch the black guys, he was also there too. He didn't tell me, oh, Tony, watch this guy in the front that's been standing there for 10 minutes. So the guy is just standing there looking at the jeans, and then out of nowhere, he snatches them all up and runs out the store. <laughs> Everybody just jumps up like, what happened, what happened, what was that? I was like, that guy just stole a whole stack of jeans. Oh my God. And I was like, interesting now the two black guys that came in here with a do-rag and white beaters and you know they were kind of sagging their pants a little bit with shopping bags mind you you wanted me to go watch them so bad and Tony go upstairs ask if they need help they bought their jeans and left middle-aged white guy that come in nobody thinks he's a threat nobody thinks he's a potential loss prevention accident right He's the one that actually stole. Down like that, okay? And you could tell he felt so comfortable doing it because he was like, oh, nobody gonna think I'm gonna do it. So he just stayed in there, smiling. You know, people walking in and out. He's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> It was interesting to me in this episode how they had that lady double down on her prejudice and racism. And then she gives Chelsea a wink, like, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying. In that moment, you could tell she felt that she had some type of solidarity with Chelsea in regards to their preconceived notions and prejudice against black people. Even though, you know she came in with Raven, her friend, to apply for the job. You know Raven and her are friends. For some reason, you thought this younger white girl was just gonna be on that same page with you when it comes to the negative stereotypes and prejudice against black people. You're a dummy, bitch. To sum it up real quick in the end, Raven ends up acting like she's the manager of the whole entire franchise of that store. So then the lady starts acting real nice for her. And then they have Eddie, who's also black, you know, their black breast friend, who's a guy, come in to apply for a job, right? To see how she acts. She, like I said, entertains it. But as soon as Eddie leaves, you can secretly see her on the camera that Chelsea's wearing in her hat. Say, oh, his application going right in the garbage. Of course not. 
let me get you an application. Listen to me. I have to pretend to hire this guy. And once again, we finally see Raven's vision when she says, The truth is, I don't hire black people. Shocking evidence of job discrimination. The plan worked perfectly. That lady ended up getting fired. And they all end up coming together at Raven's house for like a black history meal. You know, they made collard greens and macaroni, fried chicken. You know, the typical. And they all like have a nice, fun conversation at the end of the episode. Yeah, I'm glad we did it together, you guys. <laughs> I meant the ice cream! Yes, no. yes, that's <laughs> I enjoyed this episode for what it was, for what it was trying to teach, and just for the way this episode was an outlook on how the world is not always so perfect, everyone is not always so nice. People are prejudiced. People will look at you, people will look at your race, people will look at your ethnicity, and just judge you before they even really get to know you. That prejudice they have against you because of your race will override all the great attributes and positive things you can contribute. And I really loved how That's How Raven explored this in that type of way. The plot was very ABC, one, two, three, where you knew what was going to happen. But I still enjoyed watching it as a little kid because it was so blunt and direct. And it made me think about it in a way, even back then, where I was like, hmm. And I remember my mother watched the episode with me and she was telling me, yeah, that really happens, you know. But I got to say, the only thing I didn't like with That's How Raven and especially as I got older, I noticed this, is they fell into that same trope where it's like the main character gotta have two best friends and one of the friends always has to be a dummy or act slow. This series, it was Chelsea, where Chelsea, sometimes she was the ally to them, right? And that's the thing, they didn't see each other as, oh, my white best friend, my black best friend. They were just friends. But if you watch the whole episode, you see Chelsea is kind of like a dunce. And she's kind of like a, oh, ooh, ah. like one minute she gets it and the next minute she's like, oh my God, a banana. It's just like, shut up. The whole thing with the main character with a dumb best friend trope, that kind of got annoying and dragged out. Like they did it every other show. But regardless of that, I still feel like this episode holds up today. It's still effective. Some aspects of it is a little outdated, but the main message it's very clear. You have to know yourself, hold your head up high, walk through this world with the high self-esteem, and not let factors like your race or ethnicity affect you, especially concerning other people's ignorance against you for things like that that you have no control over. Just do you and everything will fall into place. And if you didn't know, there's always something better out there for you. What did y'all think of this episode with work discrimination and racism that they talked about and discussed? Did y'all relate to it? I feel like it was great that Disney had these discussions, that Disney was bold enough to make episodes like this, even back then. So the fact that some things now, some people are so surprised and, oh, my kids can't watch this. Why are they putting this in a children's TV show? Disney has always did this in a way, but just now, in the 2020s, it's just more out there. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.